Well, hello and greetings, everyone. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are in VectorVest world. Thank you so much for joining us. We're just doing a quick sound check here. Make sure you can hear me okay. So if you can let me know where you're tuning in from, that would be really helpful and appreciated. And let's see, don't see any uh, sound coming in. <laughs> and can anybody hear me okay? Hello, hello. There we go. Loud and clear in Ottawa. Thank you, Tom. <laughs> and uh, Mike from Edmonton. That's great. And Vicki, loud and clear in Fort Worth, Texas. Leslie from Cleveland. Sound is good. Lee from Tempcula, California. That's awesome. Raphael from Calgary. And this is Stan Heller. I'm broadcasting from Lethbridge, Alberta in Canada. So great to uh, to hear all of you. We do have uh, John Marabu in the background uh, from VectorVest um, Corporate helping us out with the moderating, moderating uh, of today's uh, webinar. So we appreciate that. Thank you, John. Roger says, sound is good in Sherwood Park. And we have Miami, Florida, McKeel, Andrew from Calgary. Gosh, we've got a great uh, cross-section all, all across, uh, uh, certainly all across North America and Europe. There's Susan from um, London. Great to have you with us, Susan. Jay, welcome from Long Island. Sandy from Kamoka, Ontario. So. Looks like the sound is good, so let's keep our fingers crossed and hope we don't have issues going ahead here. I think we'll be okay. We've done lots of testing and things should be good. And we've got a great agenda for you again. Uh, market timing is just so critical, just once again, and really pleased to have Dr. David Paul with us again from uh, Managing Director of the UK, and he's going to give us the update on uh, the UK and the US market, and I'll do the other markets uh, uh, that VectorVest is part of. So really, really important. And there's Dawn from Salt Spring Island. Great to have you with us, Dawn. And John from London, Ontario. <laughs> so great to have you all with us. Uh, we're going to get started here, uh, here in um, Alberta. I see the clock has just turned over to 9 a.m. here in Lethbridge, Alberta, which is 11 o'clock Eastern and 4 o'clock London, I believe, in, in the UK. So I think we're ready to go. <laughs> I'll just grab a sip of water. My throat has been a little scratchy this week. Um, and I'll just grab a sip of water and we'll be ready to go. Right, so let me make sure I'm going to put on the screen here. And uh, so again, welcome everybody. And um, we are now in the YouTube channel under VectorVest Live. So you'll see um, the upcoming Vector, uh, international forums under, um, under VectorVest Live. So I just wanted to let you know that in case you had any challenge finding the the website today certainly the link in the views took you right there but just to make sure <laughs> basil welcome from tucson uh, in arizona and carl from um, atlanta gosh we've got a great turnout across uh, vector vest world here so thank you for that all right so let's get going here quick risk disclaimer before we begin i'll just make sure that shows up on the YouTube screen here, and I think it is a little bit of lag there, but not too bad, uh, at least on my computer. So everything you will see in here is provided for educational purposes only, should never be considered as investment advice. The information is designed to empower you to make your own investment decisions, and these are yours and yours alone to make. So there is risk in investing and um, VectorVest is for um, education. The purpose of our meeting is to learn more about using the VectorVest program and the tools available to us. So uh, we're not giving any specific advice on any particular um, stock or ETF. 
All right, so let's get started here. Um, and I will be coming back again to talk about some of the essential tools and processes that are in your VectorVest program that can help you uh, become a, a better investor. And if you stick around, I'm going to show you just some basic graph layouts that I think you'll find very, very useful. Basically, four different graph layouts for weekly and daily um, setups, and I think you'll find them very useful. So, um, so the first part of, of that is going through some of the tools, and then I'll show you the graph setups and go from there. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, the recording, as always, is going to be available to you on YouTube right after the webinar. Uh, that's one of the nice features of the YouTube broadcast is that you do have access to the recording immediately after. So if you um, don't catch it all or you want a quick review, uh, you can quickly go to the YouTube again and it's going to be there for you. So let's look at the color guards. Um, you know, from the March 23rd market bottom after the COVID collapse where a lot of portfolios fell 25 to 35 percent the overall market depending on where you put your cursor <laughs> fell uh, at least uh, 25 to 30 percent or more and from there it I mean it hasn't been straight up but it, when you draw your lines on you know the the um, vector vest composite or the market timing graph it's been a pretty nice bull run and it's been in a pretty good little channel. Here's what's been happening just since the start of 2021. So in Canada, uh, the market is up 11.40%. And after a, a bit of a downturn, I guess, not really, a, certainly not a correction, maybe a small pullback. You can see the MTI was below one for several uh, days and then it has rallied up and now we're starting to see green lights again and the color guard is somewhat bullish which uh, allows VectorVest to advocate buying safe undervalued stocks that are rising in price and you're going to see that um, pretty much in all of our VectorVest color guard um, reports here the needle has turned into the green and in Canada We've been in a long confirmed up call since uh, early November, and it's it's held for, for quite a stretch here. On the U.S. side, it's been a little bit more choppy in terms of the confirmed calls, but look at all the green in the color guard. The star or asterisk indicates that there's momentum behind the price action uh, of the overall market. And just recently, again, switching from a confirmed down, the longer term, more conservative timing signal, it was, it was a confirmed down call until May 25th. And on May 26th, it turned um, positive with a confirmed up call. And you can see the MTI has been rising from those lows and uh, over a 13-day period here. And the primary wave had turned up even before the confirmed up call, obviously. Uh, that's that short-term trend in the first column. And the long-term trend, anytime the MTI is above one, that lets um, investors and traders know that the long-term trend is up. And that's what we see here. Over to Australia, we see the color guard is mildly bullish, 7.62% uh, year to date. And it's been a pretty good rally here since our last meeting, I think up over about 2.5% since our last meeting. A lot of green now in the color guard, but they also were in a confirmed down situation prior to the confirmed up call on May 25th in this case. And uh, the buy-sell ratio has been moving up from a fairly low uh, level here at 0.47 just on May 20th. So that's, you know, when we get the buy-sell ratio sort of near that 0 0.20 level, no matter which country you're in, it's, it's one of the safer times to, uh, to buy. And certainly if it does get down to 0 0.20 or lower, uh, it becomes a very good bottom fishing opportunity, whether you're buying um, 
the aggressive type of stock or the more conservative, uh, prudent type of stock, it's a good time to enter the market. On the UK side, I'll just quickly mention here, lots of green here as well. Friday was the, uh, or yesterday was the asterisk or star. So momentum behind the move. And um, it's been rallying for, for quite some time here. So really strong uh, market there at the moment. And it'll be interesting to hear uh, Dr. Paul's uh, take on it. And from the strategy, um, I should have mentioned over here at the right, just taken right from the strategy section in the VectorVest views on Friday for Australia, there was upbeat GDP data boosted sentiment this week and the price of the VectorVest Composite Australia finished at a new all-time closing high and the buy-sell ratio in MTI also moved higher over the last five trading days with our market timing systems being bullish. Let's continue to play the market to the upside. And then on the UK, the strategy encouraging manufacturing data Rallying energy shares sent the price of the UK composite higher over the last five trading days. All three of our other key indicators, RT, buy-sell ratio, MTI, also moved higher over the last five trading days with green lights filling the color guard and all of our market timing signals bullish. Let's play to the upside. You have to trade what you see and we're seeing bullish sentiment in all of our color guards. And Europe is no different, uh, up another 3% from last month when we met. And the color guard is somewhat bullish. You can see we've got uh, two green lights in the um, color guard down below here. And we have this primary wave up and we've been in a confirmed up call uh, now for, for quite some time. And if we read the strategy section, it says the economic recovery hopes inspired buying this week and the price of the VectorVest Europe composite ended higher for a third consecutive week. The buy-sell ratio in MTI also ended higher compared to last Friday and the MTI has returned to its historically oversold level of 1.50. So it's very similar to the US in that regard and, and really all of our countries uh, when the MTI gets up as high as 1.50 we're starting to look for a market top and we're we're there in in Europe we're getting close in the US side of things and we're close uh, in the UK as well so the strategy guidance from vectorvest is let's cautiously play to the upside and be mindful of the color guard in the coming week uh, just to notice any changes that might come about there all right. Any questions about anything that's happening in the world markets? <laughs> Stock time from Pittsburgh. Welcome. Okay. Doesn't look like any questions, so looks like I explained it okay. And I think you get a sense that the overall market is bullish wherever you are. And um, we've got to take advantage of that when it's when it's there for us. Uh, Duncan is asking, is Europe oversold or overbought at 1.50 with the M MTI? It, as you can see here in the strategy guidance, um, Duncan, it's letting us know that historically 1.50 in Europe is an oversold level on the market. So you, you do need to be a little bit more cautious, but... It can stay up there. We've seen that, um, especially during the COVID pandemic with all the, the government, government money coming into the system with people looking you know, for ways to augment their income in the downturn. We've, uh, we've seen more and more people coming into the stock market and that has driven prices up. So I expect that is going to continue it's just a it's just a caution though uh, we still follow the color guard but when we're up at those oversold levels historically we want to be a, just a little bit more cautious um, i always suggest play small ball uh, when that happens in other words buy um, fewer positions 
and hold fewer shares in those positions and set tighter stops. Manage your long-term positions, the one you've, ones you've held for a long time, um, just, you know, also just a little bit more closely, but let them run while they're running and just be prepared to take action if uh, the market turns. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, gosh, Duncan and everyone. I don't know if this was a misprint in, in uh, the, the strategy section or um, or in should be over. Yeah. Yeah. In my in my typing, I might have not uh, typed it correctly, but it definitely should be overbought. Sorry, folks. Uh, the market is nearing an overbought situation. <laughs> And of course, I went blindly along with what I see in the in the text. But uh, thank you, uh, quite a few people caught it uh, quite clearly. This is an overbought situation, and in that type of situation, um, you can look for potentially a, a bit of a, a loss of momentum or a pull a pullback or something even stronger than that. So uh, I'll change that little little typo there and I'm not sure if it's mine or if it's in the Europe market I'm going to be checking that <laughs> hopefully my typing isn't that bad but anyway it, it's possible all right thanks for, for all of you that caught that that's awesome yeah you're right MR <laughs> yeah Renee you're right everybody's right yeah <laughs> And J-O-F says, uh, that's the reason I can't proof me read my own stuff. <laughs> so true. All right, listen, here's Canada. And uh, so this is a better situation because I just copied directly from the strategy section. And uh, the Vector Vest Composite finished higher for a third consecutive week. And you can see we're at the bottom of a fairly lengthy channel in the market timing. And uh, when we've kind of gotten down this low at the 65 day moving average in blue and the bottom of this channel, we've been getting a, a bit of a bounce. This hasn't been as strong a bounce as we got here or got here in the past, but it's still been a, a pretty good bounce. And the support level of the bottom trend line and the 65 day moving average has held. And now we see the MTI ticking up this week and the buy sell ratio and the RT as well. Just kind of interesting as of Friday here in Canada, um, some of the some of the almost bottom fishing or lower price stocks had a really good day, although high VST stocks was second on the one day derby, 2.93%. Always a good idea to consider high VST stocks. And we did have a couple of easy rider matches with Teeny Boppers and El Chipo Chipos in Canada. Uh, these were the five day derby winners. So some good opportunities there. And if you have some time on the weekend, what I like to do is just open those searches, Teeny Boppers and El Chipo Chipos and see if there are any stocks that are setting up for the next week. All right. So where are we at with the emotional market cycle? Just another way to look at these market cycles and relate it to the MTI graph that we have in our VectorVest software. And down low here, we can see the blast off phase when the MTI is um, really below, near or below 0.6. And that's pretty much in all of our countries. Um, with no matter where you uh, trade, uh, you know, Australia, UK, Europe, Canada, North, uh, US, that's, that's universal. What's a little bit different is on the upside in Canada, when we hit 1.2, 1.3 on the MTI historically, uh, we're in that sort of um, overbought level and um, getting a little bit toppy in the market. And again, it's been a little bit different with the COVID situation, with all the money flowing into the market. We've gone up as high as even 1.7 on the 
on the MTI. I don't recall ever seeing that before. And we've stayed up at 1.5, 1.6 in Canada and the U.S. for quite some time. So, um, you know, we're up there in the U.S. right up at this level. And we're just starting out in the trending phase here in Canada. So it's, it's a good time to be uh, invested wherever you are. So Europe would be somewhere up here <laughs> at this moment, quite a bit overbought. <laughs> I see some uh, forgiven mentions in there, forgiven Stan. <laughs> uh, I appreciate that, Bob and everyone. <laughs> um, I always like to look at these global ETFs as a barometer on sort of the, the world markets. And um, so here is the global ETFs year to date, the leaders, and you can see the S&P 500 three times um, up 40%. And it was in the lead last month as well. So it's held pretty well. And South Africa and Canada the same. Uh, so for an ETF, it's cer it certainly is outperforming uh, the overall market here. Not by much. We've had a really strong market in Canada, uh, but it is outperforming the market. So these are some of the other leaders. Russia is in there. Um, you know, something to take a look at as well. And then just since our last meeting, which was um, May 7th, uh, until now, these are the countries that have performed extreme, extremely well. Poland, 10.12% uh, is a really good return. And on a ETF graph, the RT is, uh, is a terrific uh, indicator. When the RT gets above one, it's a really good time to be into some of these ETFs. <laughs> Yeah, appreciate all the comments in there. I <laughs> uh, did want to mention um, our vectorvest.ca forward slash blog. Um, it, it may not be available in every country, uh, but I think it's available in most of our Vectorvest countries. And if it is, uh, I wanted to show this graphic because I really appreciate our graphic uh, team. This was um, designed by Keith Koger and uh, the WOW Dividends watch list that I wrote about, I think I, um, yeah, I, I, I had, I think it was two weeks ago, I had an essay about some uh, 38 new stocks that we added to the WOW Dividends watch list, and Keith did some really remarkable graphics, and um, and Mike Simonato, uh, you've all heard from Mike at a couple of, uh, well, two or three of our international online forums, the most recent one being February six investing for the long term extremely popular and he's writing pretty much a weekly blog here and typically late saturday or early sunday i get it posted and always some terrific insights from mike on the market so you can go to our blog and have a look for that as well this was my essay this week just uh, looking at the insurance sector which has been so hot currently uh, number two you can see it over here at the right in, in the in RT ranking, but you can see it price of the sector got above the 40 day moving average way back here. And these stocks have just been climbing since October 26. And um, some of these are paying 4% and 3% dividend yield. So just wanted to draw that to the attention of all our Canadian investors. So with that, um, if there's any questions, I'll be glad to answer them. Otherwise, I am going to be turning it over to uh, Dr. David Paul for a look at the American market, the U.S. market, and the U.K. Uh, Tony says, good time to be in silver and gold. Well, when you see that silver gold industry group rising above the 40-day moving average, or you can look at the U.S. side uh, every Monday night in the daily Color Guard report, they will let you know where the Huey stands in terms of um, whether to buy gold and, gold and silver or not. Okay.
Just looking for any questions. Don't see any. Yep. Okay. And some of our subscribers are answering questions for others as well. <laughs> That's awesome. That's why I love that about uh, uh, about the YouTube. Uh, all right. So I'm just going to um, find Dr. Paul in our attendee list. And David, I'm going to make you the presenter here. And you'll have to accept that, I believe. And I'll move your screen over to my screen there. And we'll check the sound really quick, if you don't mind. Good afternoon, Stan. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, you're all good. I can hear you very clearly. Can people let us know in the chat box if you're all getting the sound? It's a little bit of a delay, I think, or a lag. Everybody hearing okay? Yep. Kemal says great. Sound is so great. Can I go? You're yeah. all good. Thanks, David. Thank you, Stan. Well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great pleasure to be here. Uh, and uh, it's a wonderful day here in West London. Sun shining, hardly a cloud about. Uh, a great day to be alive, that's for sure. They're all good days to be alive, but this is a particularly good day to be alive. We have to start with the UK disclaimer. Uh, Vectiv is pretty much the only uh, organization in the UK that's uh, authorized by the regulator, the FCA. And although I'm qualified to give financial advice, I can't do so because I haven't sat down with you and done a long and a detailed fact find. Uh, I'm allowed to talk about those shares that I hold myself, but I have to make it very clear that although those shares are suitable for me, they may not be suitable for you. Uh, and I've spent the week with the regulator, and we are all up to date and squeaky clean. I'm very happy to report. Uh, so uh, we are going to, uh, I'm going to do my best to be as uh, uh, focused as possible. Uh, those of you that know me will know that I can talk for hours when I get going. Uh, this is VectorVest US, folks, and uh, we had a, quite, a very strong day, a very strong week of news. Uh, and the one that I liked the most out of the whole week was that PMI manufacturing that came out well above uh, what was expected. That's an exceptionally good number. Uh, and uh, as you can see, the short term trend is up. Uh, the underlying trend is up and we've got a confirmed up uh, in place. And the little pointer is uh, far into the green. And the only reality we have, ladies and gentlemen, is the present moment. Uh, and uh, the present moment is saying uh, that it's safe to buy stocks and certainly to hold stocks. Uh, uh, as Stan says, the MTI is getting up to about 1.4. That's getting up towards the uh, overbought situation. And in the charts that I present in a second or two, I'll try and illustrate that. Uh, so we uh, go to the VectorVest composite. Uh, we can see uh, that it's been far from smooth going since March. And uh, the uh, confirmed calls have come and gone. Uh, it's a bit like a dog's uh, dinner in there. Uh, so uh, since March, certainly, uh, we've had to have a fair amount of resilience to be in the market, and uh, that happens frequently. Last year was incredibly easy, uh, and it seems to me to want to break out of this. Now, this is quite noticeable, folks, because if I get my little pen, uh, to me, that looks like the first attempt, that looks like the second attempt, this looks like the third attempt, and we're now hopefully going to break on the fourth attempt. Markets like to break on the fourth attempt. So that's very positive indeed. Uh, the MTI is pushing up, uh, and it would seem to be getting above these last highs, which means that this divergence that we have in place is blown out of the water. Uh, those of you that know my work uh, will know that we have a form of divergence that's not well known. It's called reverse divergence. And I noted this reverse divergence pattern in this and this confirmed up is preceded by this reverse uh, divergence. And I think that that adds greatly to the strength of this move. 
Uh, so I think that we've got to move up. Uh, that move has come quite a long way, and I wouldn't be at all surprised to see a pullback before it goes again. I'll show you that in some detail now. Uh, and uh, that's that reverse divergence. This is the same thing, just blown up to six months. Uh, and I think that we're probably going to move up a little bit, uh, and then it'll do its best to put the fear of God into you again. And with any luck, we're going to see a nice move into June. Uh, so I'm reasonably bullish on this market. Uh, and uh, now what's happening at the moment uh, says that I have to be strong. Uh, that's the DEW, which is also up. Uh, and then my old friend, the S&P 500, uh, which is also moving up strongly. And I'll show you the intraday view in a second. Uh, but uh, I know I'm not supposed to count waves, but uh, that's one, two, this is three. And this, I think, is moving up uh, into this fifth wave. And I would be surprised if we don't take out these highs, suck everybody long, and then go back down again a little bit. But this is a very strong market, folks. Uh, and I think many of us who are position traders won't even see that little bit of a pullback. Uh, so if you're a day trader, just watch out for it. Now, this is the S&P uh, 500. That's the uh, intraday market. It's the uh, E-mini, and it runs 24 hours a day. I did a coaching class on was it Thursday night, and uh, I was very bullish about this on Thursday night because when a market comes down and takes out that low and then reverses again, uh, that's always a, a very strong situation. And we had resistance here, resistance here, resistance here. And then that became support, support. And that is what my mentor, Richard Wyckoff, uh, would have called a Wyckoff spring. And I know you've heard me talk about that a thousand times. But I think there's more strength in this on Monday. Uh, uh, and we can easily get from here to 4275. Okay. Uh, and then it's going to look, I think, Stan, as you said a second ago, it's going to look very overbought uh, indeed up around there. Uh, but uh, I'm, I'm quite bullish on the market. Uh, I bought the spring. Okay, and uh, that was quite a nice 30 points on Friday. Uh, so I, I make my beer money and expenses out of trading in this. And we have a, a wonderful system here in the UK called spread betting, which is a shadow market, which allows you to actually take bets uh, on anything. And uh, the, the winnings are tax free. You don't even have to put it into your tax return, which is a, a great ruse. Uh, uh, so 4275, uh, I think, is going to happen next. Uh, I have a position on AIG, and that's another spring. As you can see, resistance, uh, that resistance became a support, was back up again, and comes down, nails the stop, and then reverses. So I have a position on uh, uh, AIG, got hammered here, and then it broke above that high. That's very strong. Uh, and that's what I call a knockout bar. And if the market breaks above the knockout bar, it should go. So I'm holding that position at AIG. Uh, <clears throat> over the last, well, certainly since March, uh, scaling out has been very, very profitable. Uh, in other words, because the breakouts or the moves just haven't followed through. So uh, my stop loss is already at exit, uh, at entry on that and I've taken a little bit of profit along the way. So if the whole darn thing falls apart, I, I've at least uh, uh, paid the phone bill, okay? Uh, so uh, now on Thursday night, folks, we talked about, we did an exercise where we looked at the Midas Touch watch list. And from the Midas Touch watch list, we looked for possible uh, buying opportunities. And I identified four or five of them. And the one that came up first, because I had the highest rating by BST on the Midas Touch watch list, uh, was pull. And as you can see, uh, pretty much, uh, uh, there's my two moving averages. And uh, I also put an 89 on as well, which I haven't got on here. But if the 21's above, the 55's above, the 89 all is good. And that was the case here. Gapped up through this high, always a good sign. And now it's made a perfect five wave uh, 
symmetrical triangle. I was humming and hawing about buying it on Friday, but at the open, it went right back and it kissed uh, the uh, old trend line that defines this little triangle. And it was bought strongly off that uh, trend line. So I haven't bought into it yet, but if I do see it breaking up through uh, Friday's high, uh, then I'll put an order in uh, uh, above that uh, for Monday afternoon. So uh, that's, do I know what's going to happen next? Of course, I don't know what's going to happen next. Uh, there is risk and there is reward. And uh, our job is not to avoid the risk, but to manage it. And I always tell the UK people, it doesn't matter, folks, how well you know the horse. Don't stand behind the darn thing, okay? All it takes is one little tick to bite it in a sensitive part and you're in hospital for a fortnight. So uh, uh, manage risk carefully. Uh, and uh, that's what the game is all about. So uh, the target in this is great. And uh, we could easily see if it does break up that this bit is repeated on the upside. And that would be absolutely wonderful. Clearly. 70% of the exercise is the market. If the market keeps going up, I think it will, then uh, that should move with it. Uh, and Target was another one that we thought about. Uh, and Target, again, there's the three moving averages. See when the darn things turn, well, they all come together. I, I, I paid a visit to the New York Stock Exchange a lifetime ago, and an old fellow on the floor, South African guy, uh, he told me that when all the averages uh, cross like that, that's what they call on the floor a bow tie. Uh, because it looks like a bow tie, I suppose. And uh, you get very lucky when the 21's above the 55 is above the 89. Uh, and sometimes I take contrarian trades, uh, maybe too many contrarian trades. That's all my, that's my friend Larry Pesabetis's fault. But uh, I've uh, bought into a little position in Target on Friday as it broke up through that high. So uh, we shall see. Uh, uh, stop loss is quite a long way away, folks. Uh, and I placed the stop loss at uh, the Vector Vest stop loss. No, it's somewhere about here, uh, somewhere down around here. So stop loss is quite a long way away on that. Uh, so in the US, I have a position on apps, which is in the money. Uh, I have a position in the GDX, which is well in the money. And my stops at entry, I've got a position at AIG uh, and the stops at entry. I have a position in Disney and my stop is at entry. And I've taken a little bit on those. Uh, so if the darn thing works, great. If it doesn't work, and that strategy, in fact, uh, has been useful in this period where the market's all over the place. Last year, if you'd applied that strategy, it would not have made you nearly as much money as holding a full position. Uh, because last year, if you remember, the, the market just sort of went, uh, and that's unusual. That's unusual. Uh, and uh, for me, and for lots of people that I speak to, especially institutional traders, it, it reinforced an awful lot of bad habits, because markets are not always like that. And uh, many people uh, who avoided the risk of getting out last year, and it paid off for them, I uh, did the same thing this year, and they get kicked severely where it hurts. So, uh, as I say, manage risk, don't avoid risk, manage risk carefully. The UK market is strong, uh, and uh, everything is up. The confirmed up has been up since the 11th of November, uh, and we have a very strong UK market, uh, and uh, long may it last. Uh, as you can see, that's the uh, confirmed calls, which have responded much, much better to this market action here, uh, well, in the UK than in the US. That's not always the case, folks. They always, some, they, they all have their moments. As you can see, uh, we'll see maybe clear in a second, this market came back and kissed those old highs. I think this is a critical level because this is moving up. That's flat, I know, but the old buy-sell ratio, the old canary is falling. And I would like to see the buy-sell ratio get up through that last top. In other words, that would blow away that previous uh, divergence. That would be very strong, in my humble opinion. Uh, so uh, steady as she goes. That's the same thing, just blown up. You can't even see the last confirmed call because it's more than six months ago. And the confirmed calls folks do a great job for position traders in avoiding all these short-term cycles and sticking 
with the main flow. I, I haven't seen anything do it better. Uh, and I've been at this a long time. As you can see, uh, and Calvin in Wales, if you're listening, sir, you see how it came back and kissed the 78%. Now, a lifetime ago, Calvin, that wouldn't have happened. The market would have stopped at the trend line. And, and people would have been looking at the trend line, or at least this area. Just remember, support and resistance, folks, is not one line, that's a zone. Uh, uh, but in these modern markets, uh, the FIB levels are really, really important and they drive the market. So frequently, uh, if you can get one sitting on top of each other, great. But in this case, the market went back. And why did it go back? I ask this at every seminar. Why did the market? could go well it went there because the orders were there simple as that anybody who actually panicked and got out with a market order it went to where the orders were simple as that markets are not there to make you rich markets are there to fill orders and it's moved up and again we're seeing this one two a uh, three and uh, uh, maybe a little bit more in the UK market but I'd be surprised folks we don't take that top out okay suck everybody in and then pull back to see who's got what it takes. So, uh, 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 very positive about markets. I think we're going to see a nice move uh, into June. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen next. If I did know what's going to happen next, then I would take every cent I've got and put it into a sure share, but uh, I don't know what's going to happen next. I have to manage risk very, very carefully indeed. Uh, and, uh, uh, but uh, I think they're looking good both technically and fundamentally. That's the DEW. And as you can see on this one, she's a bit more clear without my junk on it. The last four days, uh, the composite has in fact clocked uh, that old high. So uh, clearly people sell, day traders selling when the market gets up around to that level. Uh, so uh, I, I expect that that will keep going. I've really done very little in the UK market, and I'm incredibly impressed with the portfolio. Uh, and uh, for those of you uh, UK people, we'll go through that in detail on Monday afternoon. Halma had a very good day on Friday. Uh, the building companies had a great run last week, but uh, they gave it back, uh, a little bit back on Friday. The news came into the market on Friday. There was a report that came out on Friday. But those people who were anybody knew that before uh, it came out. So that was the old adage of uh, uh, you sell the fact, uh, buy the rumor, sell the fact. So uh, I, I'm still very positive about both those building companies. Uh, and so Vinnie Platinum uh, has pulled back a little bit. We'll look at that in a second. Uh, and this uh, CCC's had a great day. Uh, Games Workshop has broken a new high. Uh, new highs are tricky places to be. It needs to push right through that. There was an RNS on Friday morning uh, about Games Workshop, uh, and uh, I still have to come to grips with that. Cranswick, the sausage maker, just makes me hungry even thinking about a Cranswick sausage. Uh, uh, is up uh, and well above that 40 pound level. Halma is one of my favorite stocks. I really like this uh, GB group. I've added to JD Sports, uh, and we'll talk about gold in a second. If gold does what I think it's going to do, I'm going to add to Pan African Resources and I'm going to add to uh, Holly Metal. Uh, it has, gold has to do what I think it's going to do. There's the Euro, folks. Uh, I ran a Forex trading floor for a very long time, and I lived through every last bit of this run-up. That's since 1999. We've got five waves up. We've got three waves back. Uh, this is pushing, and I think there's a great deal of dollar weakness ahead. I wouldn't be at all surprised to see it pull back a little bit. This is a monthly chart. Uh, clip these stops before moving again. But to me, there looks as if uh, there's both a great deal of euro strength and particularly a great deal of pound strength. And I'll make this quite controversial claim that I firmly believe that over the next three or four years that the pound will be the currency of choice, a defensive currency. Uh, but maybe that's me being patriotic. There's the gold market. Uh, and I felt that the shorts would have a go at that 78% retracement, and that's what happened. But on Friday, we made up a great deal of that. Uh, and 
the question is now, can we actually take this back out? Now, if the market breaks Thursday's high, it means that this big red bar would be a knockout bar. I assure you that based on this big red bar, uh, all the uh, uh, shorts will have loaded up. And if the market breaks that high, folks, those guys will have to cover. And that'll be a, a, the same situation as you saw AMC. Now, over the years, I've stood in, I've sat in front of stood in front of uh, crowds who can't fathom uh, why it's any different on the short side than on the long side. And I keep telling them you've got to be better on the short side. Nobody believes me until they're caught in a first short squeeze. Just remember, you've got to deliver something that you haven't got, and you've got to go out there and find it. Uh, so uh, a, a squeeze here would be absolutely wonderful. That would take that up stronger. So if I see the market breaking up through these highs, then I'm going to add to Polymetal, and I'm going to add to my other little favorite share, Pan-African Resources. Uh, so uh, uh, reasonably bullish in gold. Gold has got a temper on it, so it's not for the faint-hearted. And if you're a worry-free type investor, uh, then... Uh, uh, Leave it well alone. Susan Thornborough in the UK, who uh, runs our London group, uh, she is uh, she only trades in shares with very, very high RS. She wouldn't look at a gold stock. And that's why she looks 35 and I look 85. Okay, so just be very careful uh, before you go into gold stocks. That was the run up on Friday, folks. And this uh, push up, this very strong run up on Friday looks uh, again, it's an Elliott expression that looks very impulsive to me. So even under the most bullish circumstances and gold guys don't like to hear any bad. If Charlie's listening, he doesn't like to hear any bad about gold. I think we'll get a push and then it'll come back again to test us. Where it'll come to? 62, 78% of that. I would favor 78 Gold market like 78. That's 78 of that. Okay. Uh, and uh, and then, with any luck, it's going to go back up. But uh, next week, Monday or Tuesday trading will be critical for the gold market. If it does break down through this low, then this was a rally in the bear market. And we're probably going to get down to about 1940. 1840, excuse me. Uh, 1840. Uh, and that's the prize, folks. And I'm very positive about the prize. Uh, it's going to be easy. If that goes up to 2,300, it's going to be easy in a year's time to put up a gold ETF or whatever and say it's done 60% in the last bloody year. But that's no good uh, if you weren't on the ball, if you weren't in there. So thumbs down uh, to buying. And I assure you that when you want to buy, you won't feel like it. It's simple as that. Uh, so. Uh, this is the prize. This is this. This is a monthly chart, and that's since 2012. This huge cup, and uh, it would seem to be starting to confirm quite nicely. It's gone back and kissed that trend line, and uh, I think uh, those people who would class themselves as an adventurous trader uh, should consider it, especially if it breaks up through last week's highs. Okay. Uh, that's silver. Uh, as you can see, there's a trend line there. That low was, uh, I think, 62, no, 78% of that to the tech. So that was a nice confluence of the trend line and the, the Fib level. It's gone up very nicely since that. That's a weekly chart. Uh, man, they rarely break on the third attempt. One, two, three. So I, I think we're going to see a something like that before it goes and then it will go uh and uh then silver has got a huge target in front of it but it can easily pull back so just watch that where's it going to pull back to well i think that there'd be a high probability that it goes to that trend line it doesn't have to uh and i know that the, the, the silver and the precious metal bulls will be putting little pins into my doll after saying that uh, but I think the situation is very, very bullish. If it were to break down the third attempt, it's going to go. It's going to go big time. That's platinum, folks. And uh, platinum, that's at 
This is a weekly chart again. That's the bull market. Those of you who are UK people and SLP or JLP, that's what's pushing up the page. Uh, uh, that's those two weekly bars are when SLP came right back and caused us to panic. Uh, and that red bar is why it came back again after running up. So it's following the platinum price. This low to me and this trend line, it looks to me as if it's going to be bid here, folks. All right. So we could have a bit of weakness in that yet. Uh, and uh, I think I've got the SLP chart. This is Sylvania Platinum. A small miner in South Africa, it's cheap. It's on a PE of five or six, uh, and it's got an RV of 1.7, uh, uh, and should grow earnings at, what, 50% next year. So if it was re-rated, uh, plus the earnings come in, that's a huge multiplier. Uh, and uh, it can come back, as you see, it stopped. There was the trend line and went through the trend line to the 78% retracement. That's more and more common. A lifetime ago when I started this business, that would not have happened. But it went right through, stopped there. And it pushed up very strongly on reasonable volume. It's now pulling back also on reasonable volume. Uh, this pullback happened on low volume, and that, that was telling me that we're going to go again. I think that there's those of you that... Uh, have got SLP, and Lord knows I got about 100 emails last week about it. Uh, uh, you just have to watch it. You just have to watch it carefully here, folks. Uh, and it clipped its stop loss for one day, and I, my advice to everybody was that if it uh, closed below the low of the day, uh, that caused the uh, red to come up that, to get out, and it didn't do that. Uh, so I would suspect that we're going to go sideways here and break again on the fourth attempt. Mr. Gann said markets like to break on the fourth attempt. There's copper, folks, and there's nothing to worry about on this chart of copper. This looks very bullish to me. As you can see, we've got one, two, three, four, and five. That looks like a bull flag. Now, most bull flags, if you read Tom Bokoski's book, stop at a 50% retracement. Uh, and uh, uh, it went up on Friday off the 50% retracement. Uh, but I think that if we break that little flag, we'll go again on copper. So I'm quite happy to hold. And uh, my biggest holding in that uh, area uh, is BlackRock World Mining, which has got a... Uh, it's got all the usual suspects in there. And it's, in fact, pulled back in a falling wedge. And uh, it came back and tested that level. That looks very positive to me. If this level holds, uh, then it's well above that last consolidation. So uh, I'm holding on to that. That's been a very good earner. Uh, uh, it's not for me. It's for my sons. It's in a fund I've set up for them. And that's the oil market. And that's been the surprise of the week because... The entire market thought this was a corrective move. And those highs that lasted for three weeks was 78% of that last move. And there's a huge short interest here uh, that's going to have to cover soon. I would ex I think that oil is going to move up towards those highs, slightly under 80 from here. And that will conclude this move. Then we should see a pullback again uh, in oil. But that's just... Uh, uh, a huge move up in markets. Uh, and uh, I think that uh, uh, as long as the stock market keeps going, that that will keep going. How long the stock market can keep going, I, I really don't know. Uh, we just need to follow the front page of Vector Vest. But it is becoming very exuberant. And I'm going to read something from a new company uh, that it wants to be listed in the American stock market. It's based in uh, Istanbul, uh, they raised $550 million yesterday on a ultra-fast grocery delivery app. Okay. And some fella from uh, Istanbul, who I'm sure is quite a character, uh, he says, and uh, those of you that are marketing people that have sat in long and tedious marketing meetings about some form of uh, ultimate sales proposition, 
the uh, sales proposition and their core belief in uh, this company called Get Here, which is going to deliver custom, deliver groceries from uh, not from normal shops, but from uh, black warehouses. I think they're called not normal shops. The rest of the people that deliver groceries, they buy them from Sainsbury's or Morrison's or wherever. But this guy is going to buy from the actual producers and uh, put them into his own fact, his own storage facilities, and then deliver them uh, by little motorbikes. And if you live in London, you'll know that those motorbikes are a terror. But his USP, ultimate positioning statement, or whatever the hell the thing is called, it's called, he wants to democratize the right to laziness. That's his statement, democratize the right to laziness. So we are becoming a little exuberant uh, and on that rather interesting note, uh, we'll finish with Shell. And Shell is sitting on a 78% retracement here. A bit disappointed about this because it hasn't moved up uh, with the oil price. Uh, so, But I'm hanging in there. I'm in from, I don't know where I'm in from, somewhere down around here. Uh, and uh, there is hope if it breaks this level, then uh, that head and shoulders reversal would have a target up here somewhere, but a bit disappointed with that. There was much, much better oil opportunities than Shell. Uh, it's always easy in hindsight. Stan, sir, <laughs> that's me. All hey, out of air. David, thank you so much. Gosh, you've covered a lot of ground. And, uh, you know, here in Canada, we really appreciate your review on the metals as well, because uh, that's certainly a strength in our economy. So uh, pleased to have all of that information. Um, yeah, I don't see, are there any questions for David before we move along, folks? Um, before I grab the controls back, um, he certainly answered a lot of questions uh, for you. I know Sandy had a question about your moving averages, but you know, we, we've got such great uh, uh, subscribers with us in the chat that that was answered pretty quickly uh, on your behalf. So. Uh, I don't see any other questions. Um, Michael from Ottawa is commenting, Dr. Copper should break out higher as the economy opens wider. And we've got some great stocks in Canada, ERO in that space and, and others well, that's what as the well. Chart is saying as well. That's what the chart is saying as well. Yeah. That PMO manufacturing. I think if you follow one number, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the whole month, uh, it's that, P, uh, that US PMI manufacturing, uh, incredibly influential. If you want to follow another number, it should be the Philly Fed, which is a relatively small study, uh, but uh, that study has been incredibly predictive over the years. So just two numbers to keep your eye on. And if you were to take the uh, uh, PMI and the Philly Fed and plot that against uh, uh, the Dow Jones, for example, is an incredibly strong correlation. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, <laughs> I just want to, MR, MR mentions, uh, FYI, um, Shell just lost uh, a Danish lawsuit. So maybe some news out there to, to keep an eye on. And uh, Glenn is asking, David, if you see oil going higher, um, looks like Shell might be having some some uh, turbulence ahead there uh, but uh, what about other oil sp in that space other oil companies yeah other oil stocks in that space uh, do you see see some potential there it's been really robust in canada lately my goodness <laughs> really yeah, came off sure. the floor yeah for sure uh there's an awful lot of potential there tullow oil for example in the uk had a cracking week last week so all the small producers do exceptionally well. Small little company that I've been following, one of our subscribers is a big shareholder into it. Uh, PPC uh, in the UK should do exceptionally well out of this. Uh, awesome. I, I just pretty much talk about what I've got my own money in and uh, yeah. uh, went into Shell uh, and uh, it uh, hasn't, it's been a bit of a disappointment, but the way it's holding at that 78% retracement, uh, uh, sooner or later, it's going to bounce up. Shell has got uh, so many lawsuits against it uh, over the years. Uh, oh, <laughs> okay. 
just like hundreds of the things and oh, uh, yeah environmental grounds etc uh, yeah it's just a, and, just a blip for some of these big companies isn't it well it, it's the it's the 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 all the big oils are in fact making what many people believe is a lip service towards the green economy uh whether they're ever going to really change their tune or not uh, uh not that many people are sure of uh I don't think they've got much choice, but uh, mm -hmm. uh, no, my money's in Shell so far. I have uh, I haven't bought into any other ones. I should have, but I didn't. Okay, all right. Well, David, let's uh, we'll move on from there. But lots of great comments in the chat, folks. If you liked David's presentation, don't for, forget to click on the like button. I appreciate all the commentary going on in the chat. And John, thank you again so much for moderating for us. We appreciate it. So, David, I'm going to grab the controls back, if that'll work for me, and um, take over the screen. Here's everyone. Yeah. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye now. Thank you so much. Okay, I think that's my screen there, and let's have a look. Yep, it is. Okay. All right. Well, that was pretty fantastic. Thank you uh, again to Dr. Paul. And what I'm going to do is talk a little bit here about just some basics, sort of back to basics a little bit with the VectorVest uh, program, looking at some of the essential tools that we all have in our VectorVest toolbox and some processes to help you become a better investor. And I know many of you are doing extremely well already. Some of you may need a, a pointer here and there. And uh, that's what this presentation is all about. Uh, so let's get right into it. If uh, I think everybody can hear me okay and see my screen so I think it's yeah it's showing up there on YouTube I kind of got to look to way to my left to see it but there it is <laughs> oh our likes uh, just zoomed up there uh, so thank you for that everyone so it really takes three things to make you a better investor a continuous training and and excellent market information are right at the top of the list powerful tools and we certainly get that in the VectorVest program and then you need to develop a methodology that is easy to use and suits your investment style, which includes your um, time frame. You know, not everybody can be at the computer all day. And if that's the case, you need to have a different method of uh, stock selection and purchase than someone who's watching uh, at the computer all day long. So you need a, a methodology. And VectorVest does give subscribers lots of uh, variety and choices on that, and we'll cover off a few of, few of that today. But there's just some basics that everybody should be aware of if you're not already. So the continuous training and education, I'm just going to go through the welcome tab and the training tab just really, really quickly. And I know for many of you, this will be kind of old hat here, but... Um, bear with me <laughs> and by the way at the end i'm going to show you just the basic vector vest tools that everyone needs to be successful so the welcome tab just how to build that watch list and read the graphs in a basic way uh, setting up your graphs and saving them heating the color guard market direction is so important and so brian D'Amico from our educational services team walks you through an exercise here uh, at the right, how to manage your stocks, add stocks to a watch list. And really the watch list, you can, you can manage your entire portfolio right from a watch list in VectorVest. It's that powerful. And there is a, a weekly getting started coaching session that you can sign up for and get a live uh, coaching session where you can ask questions. You can download Dr. Toledo's little green book, Stock Strategies and Common Sense, and save it to your computer. And there's a quick reference guide on what to buy, when to buy, and when to sell. You can download that and save it as well. And then under the training tab, there's a couple of features here that I think sometimes people miss. So I want to uh, uh, walk us through that if it'll come up for me. <laughs> All I see is a, a blank screen right at the moment. Let me double click here and just see if I can get the data feed connected. Well, I got over to graphs somehow. All right, let me uh, try it over here. Oh, 
Okay, I may not be able to show you the training tab. I'm not sure. If anybody has their program open, are you getting the training tab? I can maybe go to a different country. Let me just uh, see if I can open up a different country here really, really quick. Boy, my typing is not great today. Sorry, folks. I'm just going to just log into a different country. And again, we can, we can uh, log into any of the countries here. Just taking a while to load up here. So I'm not sure why that is not showing up. I've not seen that before. Is anybody else seeing that? Roger says Canada works. I did try Canada. Let me try it again. There's Canada, there's the home, there's the training. Okay, got it on Europe. Okay, <laughs> not sure why. Maybe I had Canada open too often, I think. Um, but anyway, so the training tab is a wealth of information. The Successful Investing Quick Start course is included with your subscription. Stock analysis, weeding your portfolio. In other words, that big question on when to sell. Uh, the green light buyer in the market timing is a great methodology, cherry picking checklist and a 10 minute management plan. So these are all 15 to 20 minute videos. And then um, <laughs> over here at the right in the VectorVest University, you've got uh, some new um, just free education programs up at the top here, swing trading. Options Foundation, um, Strategies to Protect and Grow Your Retirement Nest Egg, really that worry-free investing, and then the 10-Minute Investor. How many of you were aware of these new free courses? Give me a Y if you were aware of them and just an N if you weren't aware. And maybe give me a number three if you want to look at them now, <laughs> now that you know they're here, just to make sure everybody's with me here. Y if you knew these were here, N if you didn't know, and a three if you're gonna check them out. I see quite a few no's, didn't know they were there. I see a three now from Duncan, and some did, MR did. Three from David, yeah, three, so, all right. So mission accomplished, I gave you something new here. <laughs> these are outstanding short, short courses and they're free, so, you can, you can uh, head right in there and, and pick that up. All right, so I'll close out of that. And then um, in the VectorVest little, got, I've, I've got, uh, looks like maybe, oh, I've hit the same number there. And then the other one I wanted to mention again, uh, because, uh, oh, hey everybody. Sorry. I'm a little confused because I'm in a different uh, country there, but I think that was the main thing that I wanted to, to show you there. There are some other tools in there that you can access as well. All right. Let me get rid of this. It's just so I'm not confused. <laughs> so there's the navigation training series in there. So that's Glenn Tompkins uh, training videos on every tab in the program. So you'll find that under the training tab. And again, the get started uh, coaching, you can register for the upcoming webinar. And then there's one that's archived um, as well. So let me just see if I can uh, make a really quick change here. Okay. might be my computer today. I have been having a little uh, bit of an issue. So hopefully that's what it is. Everybody else is able to access pretty well. All right. So we'll see what happens here. So the powerful tools, there's, there's lots of them in the VectorVest program and you need to focus on a few. So I'm going to talk about market timing the stock viewer, how you can use watch lists as well as the stock viewer for analysis and monitoring 
good quality stocks and good opportunities for purchase. And then the VectorVest graphs, um, very flexible, vibrant, and easy to read. So we'll kind of go through and, and show you that a little bit. Okay. So I made a little switch over to another database here. And so here is that VectorVest University. Here's the navigation training series. So this Getting Started Coaching will give you access to the archived webinar, the most recent webinar for the Get Started Coaching. And it's very, very helpful. There's our help files down below. Uh, but the biggest help file, of course, is to call our support team right here. Uh, VectorVest um, support team, product support, one 658 7638 And I'll show you those numbers at the end. All right, so it's working there. That's good. <laughs> yeah, I see a lot of people uh, found something new there with those four free courses. So that's awesome. So on the market timing, I'm just going to show you just how valuable it is. And here is the SPX on the US side. I've got green lights, um, the green light buyer market timing, which is essentially every time you see a green triangle, that means there's a green light in the price column. Now the confirmed down call triangles are what you see in red or brown here. And those, these, those are the most conservative signals combined with a very kind of a fast or more aggressive signal with the GLB, the green light. So I really like this approach. It keeps you out of buying when we have a confirmed down that is sustained for quite a, a long time. If we have a confirmed down and there's a quick reversal, which does happen, you'll see the green lights start to show up fairly quickly. And in this case, it was um, a fairly brief opportunity to uh, to make some money here. And then uh, this one, though, of course, was the beginning of that very long sustained uptrend with a little bit of weakness here in September and October. Um, I remember those months very well. It was difficult to make uh, uh, excellent money there, but uh, definitely a good possibility there. And here again, just the green, the, the red triangles are just protecting you and the other Green light buyer triangles are giving you, you know, solid opportunities for, for buying and holding your good positions. And the color guard is where you get the daily guidance, so important, when to buy. It doesn't tell you when to sell. You manage your stops, your stop prices on the when to sell side. And this is just going to guide you just like a traffic light. When it's the needles in the red, don't buy. Just wait for a better opportunity. You'll see uh, we're three ticks into the red because we've got three red lights across the top. Price action, relative timing, our direction and momentum indicator, and the buy-sell ratio telling us the health of the market is not uh, where it should be on this occasion. And then, of course, we have the MTI. When it's above one, it's long-term up. Uh, you'll see that in the trend column. When it's, uh, the MTI is below one, we're in a long-term downtrend. And then we have our confirmed calls as well. All right, and we only want to be buying when there's a green light in the color guard, and that's why I showed you this, this uh, graph layout. Very simple. And conservative and prudent investors will want to be fully invested soon after the first confirmed up call. Um, you know, we don't get very many confirmed up calls, especially in Canada, maybe some of the other countries. I know the U.S. gets a few more than we do, uh, but we don't get very many. And when you get a, a confirmed up call, which came for us, we had one in May, we had another one in November. When you had a confirmed up call, you really do want to get invested very quickly and you might already be stepping in with the green light buyer. All right, so lots of opportunities there. Just to give you a, an idea of the market timing phases, we have that blast off phase. We saw it on the emotional market cycle when the MTI is near or below 0.60. As it is here, as it is here, those are strong buying opportunities, whether it's bottom fishing or just buying good quality dividend stocks, for example, that have been beaten down. This is a great entry opportunity. 
We have our trending phase where the market moves away from sort of those bottom fishing stocks into good quality um, stocks that may also pay a dividend. And that happens between 0.80 and 1.5 on the US market. And then we have our topping phase where we're in that overbought market condition and we need to be a little bit cautious. But you can see over here at the right, um, the MTI stayed well above 1.5 for a couple of months before we finally did get a pullback and then another good buying opportunity, a little safer buying opportunity down here. Okay. And on those free courses in VectorVest University, um, somebody said they're not seeing them. If you go um, university.vectorvest.com, uh, that might be a better way to come into the VectorVest University. So university.vectorvest.com. All right, so those are the phases of the market. Canada, we're pretty similar, although um, our trending phase typically goes from 0 0.80 to about 1.3. Uh, and then above that is, is the topping phase here in Canada. But you can see we've had some really strong um, markets here where the MTI has stayed in that topping phase for quite a while up at the top here. So safest time to buy this blast off phase, whether you're a bottom fisher or dividend investor. And I know this was this one was hard to come in on the first green light, but the DEW timing signal, a little bit more of a Goldilocks timing signal came in on April 6th. And uh, that was a great opportunity and the market's pretty well gone up from there. So powerful tools in our stock viewer here are the main factors that VectorVest investors use to buy quality stocks that are rising in price, and you can have confidence in your investment choices, relative value, that upside potential of a stock, relative safety, the how, how safe is the stock or how risky compared with the other stocks in the database, and then relative timing, just letting us know about the uh, direction and the, the magnitude of the current trend and really the dynamics of a stock's price, price movements over four distinct periods of time. These are on a scale of zero to two, all four indicators, and the master indicator is the value safety timing. So 8,000 stocks in, in the US, um, 2,900 in Canada, and um, all the other countries have about the same. So to make things easy on yourself, you want to keep it uh, quite simple. We're going to focus on building a watch list using the stock viewer and watch list viewer, reading the graphs. We'll look at weekly and daily graph layouts. I think that's sort of the most simple and effective way to manage your portfolio. So let's go in here to the VectorVest US side and uh, hopefully everything's working well here. All right, so, whoops, had it for a second, then I clicked again. So you can see some top stocks right at the top of the stock viewer. That's where you'll find them. Look at the stock's performance on Friday. Some of these had exceptional um, gains on Friday. So what we're looking for is price and value, and some of these are undervalued, which is a, a little extra measure of safety. This is the current value. If the stock was liquidated today or the company was liquidated today, it's uh, an estimate of that current value. So it's nice to have uh, price under the value. It gives us a target. And then in terms of future value, that's where the RV indicator comes in and anything above one is telling us we've got some good upside potential and it looks like we do with all of these stocks and then the relative safety 
looks at every stock in the database, gives it a, a value on a zero to two scale. And compared to other stocks, we've got some really good safe stocks here. We also have some that are just a little bit below average in the middle here. So, you know, depending on your temperament and investment style, you might avoid those stocks. If you're invest investing for the retirement, you prefer those stocks with higher relative safety scores. And then we do want the relative timing to be above one. And these are really strong momentum stocks. And there is our our combination of value, safety, and timing, which is our default sort. And of course, the buy rating is always a good start when you're looking at a, a purchase of a stock. Okay. Thank you, John, for answering some questions over there. That's awesome. So the Stock Viewer gives you uh, an excellent read on, on all the stocks and brings the best stocks to the top of the list. You can left click on relative safety if you want to find the safest stock in the database it's going to come right to the top if you want the largest upside potential you would click on relative value look at moderna's up there again so not always buy rated but uh, you can do some cherry picking there and then the comfort index looks at price history over a longer period of time and on a scale of zero to two, it helps us identify some of the smoother stocks in the database. All right, so then you just start cherry picking from here. If there's a stock you see that meets your criteria, uh, you might wanna watch it before you buy, or even if you do buy, you wanna get it right into your watch list and you can just right click on it. So right click on any stock recommend you look at the full stock analysis before you make a buy or before you put it in your watch list it gives you a snapshot of the stock uh, stock price on a graph gives you a three-month industry graph this is looking very strong again for ASO and it gives you a definition and a summary of all the indicators that you need to uh, to know about before you make a decision so it's never a bad idea just to right click on full stock analysis report, open it up and, and have a look before you add it to your watch list or before you make your purchase. If you like Academy Sports, you would right click on it and you can add it to your watch list. So if you've already got a watch list all set up, uh, you would just go ahead and add it to that to that watch list and I've got a couple uh, set up here there's one there highlight it and add it to your watch list and I'll show you how to create a watch list here when we get to that section so then you've got your watch list now what I love about the watch list and really Mike Seminato was one of the first to really bring this home in the international online forum is we have a watch list average uh, values at, in the bottom row so we can very quickly see on average we've got good upside potential we've got a strong relative safety our timing is great 1.34 and the vst is 1.36 so everything is lining up with with what we want in our investment if that's your goal and uh, you can right click on it View the watch list average graph and now you can see how well your stocks are doing currently and how well they've done in the past and it's also just a great way to look at other watch lists that you might be interested in for example in the s p folder the s p 100 watch list is a really strong watch list of stocks. You can see the RVs are above one, the RS above one, and you can right click on it and view the average graph of that watch list as well. And you see how well it's performing. So watch lists are a terrific way to set up your, your own personal watch list and go from there. On the Canadian side, I can pull it over here. 
We mentioned uh, about some additional stocks that were added to the WOW Dividends watch list, and I'll just show you where that is. So it's under Special Watch Lists. And there's the WOW Dividends. So we just did add 38 stocks. We now have 67 stocks in that watch list. These are uh, almost exclusively some of the best quality dividend stocks. They don't all pay a, a huge dividend. Some of them pay just a regular dividend, and um, but they've got ex exceptional fundamentals and they make the list. So the WOW Dividend watch list is really a list of stocks that are being analyzed and talked about on TV through BNN analysts, uh, through the different magazines that come out with ratings. And uh, we, we hadn't seen the need to make a change for quite a long time. And then we did add these stocks to give our investors more choice. So you'll find some great watch lists in all of our countries. And I think this is a really good one. If you right click on it, you can, uh, you can see bottom left to top right in price, earnings bottom left to top right. Value, it's um, as a basket, the value is rising. It is a little um, overvalued as a basket, but pretty strong overall. And if I go back five years, obviously we had the COVID collapse. We had a little difficult period here in September, October 2018. But other than that, this, this basket has just gone straight up. All right, so watch lists can be your best friend for managing your positions. And I'll show you a bit more on that, but also finding great stocks as well. Yeah, so Brian was asking if RT ranking can be added as a column in the stock viewer or watch list viewer, and it cannot. Michael uh, answered that very correctly uh, for everyone, but it's, uh, it's a tremendous indicator for um, the industries and sectors. And I did a, a quite an extensive review of that in a previous international online forum, which, um, which is archived, but I'll just quickly show you. I really like in Canada go with the sector viewer. The US I tend to use more the industry viewer, but in Canada uh, we have some sectors that really don't have uh, very many stocks in them, so this is a great way. So my essay was about the insurance sector, for example, and if I right click on the insurance sector, it's currently ranked number two, it looks like. And I can view the sector graph. And let me just switch the layout to the vector vest layout. So with industries and sectors, what we look for is price rising above the 40-day moving average and the 40-day moving average flattening out and starting to turn up. So that happened on November 11th for the insurance sector. And then an exercise you can do at home is just right click on the insurance sector, view the stocks in the business sector, and go back to November 11th. There it is right there. It happened to be a confirmed up call. Oh, that was October, wasn't it? Sorry, got to go back one month. <laughs> No, it was November. It had to be November 11th. Okay, let's go there. So you bring it back to the date that you saw in the sector graph. And then you can do a, a quick test of all those stocks to see how they performed. And we know that they all performed exceptionally well. All right, so again... sector graph just I forgot to show the uh, how you add the RT ranking so when we have a sector or industry we can add the RT ranking it's just add parameter 
capital appreciation and there you can see electronic uh, sector kind of falling from favor and it might keep you out of that sector just by doing that all right I'm going to move on here very quickly so we can build a watch list read our graphs and I'll show you some great graph set up setups and Dr. Lito, our founder in the Stock Strategies and Common Sense Little Green Book, Chapter 12, says good portfolio management starts with buying the right stocks. And you can see a couple of really strong teams here. So if you think of your portfolio as a team, when somebody's not performing, you kind of got to kick them to the bench. And if they're performing well, um, you, you let them go. So know thyself, we talked about the investment matrix. So just giving you a recap of the uh, conservative, prudent, aggressive, speculative indicators so that you know what type of investor you are. Uh, if most of your stocks have good solid RV and strong relative safety, you're in this prudent quadrant and that's where most investors um, situate themselves that's what you want to look for unless you're totally into capital preservation where you're not as concerned about upside potential that would be a conservative investor and here are the definitions uh, explained so you build a watch list of your stocks and that allows you to quickly analyze the stocks you already own so we've already shown you how you can select stocks from the stock viewer. You do the same from any special watch list and then you build your watch list. So I'm just going to just take you in on the U.S. side just to show you how I did that. So if you're in the viewer's home, you can go to the watch list viewer. And from there, come to the left page icon here and select um, a new group and you would give your group uh, just a name that you would like to identify with the types of stocks you own uh, and give it a, usually I give it a, a, a date um, on it as well so that's a group and now you've got a master folder and then you would just create a, a watch list under that folder by coming back to the page icon, click on new watch list as long as your master group here is highlighted and then just click on new watch list. And now you can maybe call it dividend stocks or some other name and usually you would give the date again just so you've always got a a mark where you know you added the stocks and then you're ready to add symbols or add them from uh, stock viewer or watch list viewer you can do it either way all right and I'll just uh, whoops go back to the US here a little bit there we go so I'm going to go back to viewers home watch list so this is a really nice feature when you click on watch list you can have a look at the ones that you've already been looking at here's a watch list of uh, stocks uh, some I have owned in the past some I do own and uh, some I just added uh, from the stock viewer um, today so it gives you a nice list of stocks and again um, you can you can right click to see the average values here and to see the watch list average of these stocks. And when I have them in the, the slide, I can see you can um, look at the relative timing. Here's the individual relative timing. I've got quite a few stocks that have a low relative timing. So if the market is starting to turn over and get toppy and you own some of these stocks, um, you want to start removing, selling some of the stocks that are causing you worry when they're well below one on the relative timing. You want to get this relative timing average up in that area around 1.2 and we're currently at 1.1. 1 .1. 
she would go ahead and sell some stocks that's called healing a broken portfolio you put your stocks in a watch list you analyze the watch list averages sell the lowest rt stocks which are below one and sell them at a comfortable pace maybe one or two per week and obviously faster if the market is in a confirmed down call and unfortunately a lot of investors will sell their kind of winning stocks first uh, the stocks that are making money and still running and they'll hope that the weaker stocks the low rt stocks will come back and what we really want to do is just the opposite sell those low rt stocks at the bottom of the list when we sort by rt and start replacing them with top vst buy rated stocks so this is what it looks like you've got the four warning signs you may have some increasing volatility you can see it up here in the candlesticks you can see it in rt the increased volatility that's a bit of a warning sign the second warning is when price crosses below the 40-day moving average as it did over here in the center of the um, of the chart not sure if my marker works here don't think it does there we go oops so there's your second warning your third warning is when RT falls below one and you can see how it was already hitting lower highs for actually a couple of months here as the stock price was moving up so that divergence is a warning that's a strong warning and then of course you get the sell rating which you really should never ignore uh, this is RBA it's um, this one whoops was on the US market but it also trades in Canada and uh, here we fell below the 40-day moving average. A couple of days later, we fell below one on the RT. And then we got a sell signal. And that was quite a saving. If Even if you just waited for the sell signal and sold, that was quite a saving. Sometimes they'll turn around and reverse. Well, count your blessings. You can always buy back in, but never allow a major collapse in your portfolio. All right. So here's what happens when you've got a great watch list. You've got a really good, strong basket of stocks and all you're doing is protecting it by maybe selling some of those low RT stocks and replacing them with um, high VST, high um, relative timing buy rated stocks. So this is a basket that over the last year is up 33.2%. And when you remove or weed out some of those stocks that had um, RT below one along the way, uh, then you get a basket that's up about 58%. So it can, can make quite a difference in your portfolio. So working with watch lists, tremendous way to manage your portfolio. In the watch list average graph, you can put on market timing signals. This is the GLB or green light buyer timing signals. And when you see uh, the red triangles, that's a confirmed down call. You can start to consider defensive action if your portfolio is falling at the same time. It's a great way to manage your portfolio. Just going to quickly show you three um, kind of simple effective graph layouts the vector vest simple using moving averages and popular technical studies that you can add and then and that one I'm going to show once again the finger four from Margaret Bell that was in last month's forum and a lot of people emailed me uh, to say how much they like that so uh, it is a popular one and it also uses basically the EMA squeeze up at the top of the chart so it's another it's another method to use that uh, layout as well. So here is VectorVest Simple, just with value running across the top of the chart. Price in candlesticks, the stop price, the sort of when to sell. Uh, never ignore the stop price. If price falls below the stop, you'll get a big red S up at the top. And then you have earnings going across the top as well. And the buy ratings, you know, after a hold or a sell, you get a new buy. That can be a great entry 
into a new position. Works really, really well. So I'll show you that on a graph here in a minute after I show you a couple other setups. So here's the weekly 1040. So in a weekly graph, your 10-day simple moving average is just like um, the 50-day um, end-of-day moving average or daily moving average. And your 40 is just like the 200. And so you can see it, it gives you a really good entry on crossovers with the 10 week moving average and the 40 week moving average. The thing about if you're using these moving averages, you have to be disciplined and say, yeah, I'm going to get in on this one, this crossover. I'm going to get out on this one at the very least, or I'll get out earlier on a sell rating, which would save you a little bit more as well. But if you have a methodology, you have a trading system, you should follow it and it'll work out really well for you. So here is the guppy and again you can use it on uh, weeklies or dailies. Um, should have changed my heading there but this is actually the guppy that I've shown in the Financial Freedom Summit and I love the fact the RT moving average of 40 is on the graph and a great guide along with the EMAs and the, the short-term and long-term EMAs. Very effective strategy. And here's the finger four from Margaret from last May um, International Forum. These are the moving averages, the five, eight, and 13, which is essentially the EMA squeeze that I've also shown at the Financial Freedom um, Summit. And Jerry D'Ambrosio is shown as a strategy of the week. Very effective entries, more for swing trading, I would say, uh, this type of an approach. Margaret adds the 20 EMA, which gives it another nice um, level to consider on price. When price falls below the 20 EMA, you might consider taking profit, but for sure when the 5 EMA falls below the 13, as it did here, as it did here, as it did here, those are exit uh, opportunities. And I chose Myrna because look at the setup right now. It's really starting to accelerate once again. So a great entry possibility. The uh, volume is always a good indicator to have on your graph. You can see the volume spikes when volume is above the 50 day moving average. The ADX when the DI crosses above the minus DI. Uh, as it did here. It's an early entry, a nice confirmation of the EMAs. MACD also confirming the EMAs. RT rising and earnings per share strong. So this is a really great layout, especially for swing trading. All right, so I'm conscious of time here. I'm just going to go quickly into the graph and uh, Let's see, I think what I'll do is just show the graph layout here from this um, watch list. And this is the 10 and 40 on the weekly graph. So you change it to a weekly. And notice how less busy it is on a weekly. It's still giving you a great entry back here. But this is really a quiet look at a, at a great company that is kind of going a little bit sideways but the 1040 in the weekly graph is keeping you in and of course we can look at the RT rising very strong there did pull back here and showed a, a little bit of a, um, a pullback on RT and a pullback on price we did get a sell rating back here on the weekly. And so you need to decide, is that going to be your exit criteria for this strategy? Or are you going to wait for uh, the 10 weekly moving average to cross below the 40? Uh, that's always up to you. But um, this works pretty well. Here's target. Believe it or not, target, that's about a 90 some percent move from that crossover. This is a strong move happens to coincide with a buy rating. You see that quite a bit. 
there was a sell from VectorVest. You could have taken profit there. And the crossover came a little bit later and got you out there. All right. And if you need help setting up your graphs with any of these layouts, our support team would be happy to, to help you out with that. They're pretty simple. If I see a lot of people asking about it, I'll, I'll go ahead and set up one. But once you set up your graph the way you like it, you right, again, you right click, add moving averages. That's pretty, pretty basic stuff. But some people may not know you can save the layouts. And that's how you do it here. Graph layouts, save modify layouts, and then give it a name that means something to you under add layouts, you know, 1040 weekly, whatever it is, white screen. And then you're set to come back in at any time. All right, so that's that is the um, 1040. And then I've got um, whoops. So I'm just going to show you the guppy and the white screen. Just a couple of features again on the guppy. I love the fact with the 40 simple moving average of RT. And again, you create that moving average the same way you do on price. You just come to the RT in your control panel, right click and add a simple 40 moving average. But I love it because when the 40 moving average is starting to slope down, you need to be a little bit more cautious. And then when it starts to slope back up and with the guppy, those six EMA fast moving averages cross above the slow um, blue investor moving averages. What a great entry that was on lows. That was at 122 and we get up around 200. So the guppy can be a very strong setup for you as well. The vector vest simple layout, very um, basic again, but really effective. You just left click on graph layouts again, and it's the top layout, vector vest simple. Get your stop price with price. You have the RT as an area, and you've got earnings per share. When earnings per share is falling, the stock is having difficulty with momentum. Earnings really drive the share price. So here Goldman Sachs was struggling and here earnings per share was really picking up and look what happened to price. So pretty simple layout. Earnings per share really ramping up, gives you a strong price action Price starts to fall, earnings is flattening out, RT is falling. Pretty basic, simple layout. And then once you have your layout for uh, the last one on our list, and that's Margaret's uh, finger four. So I got to find finger four here. Got a lot of layouts, most of which I don't use, and this is an education account. <laughs> I really should be moving some of these out. Let me get to the finger four. Be nice if we could do it by alphabet, but I can't, so. Oh my goodness. There we go. So there's Margaret Bell's finger four. My goodness, does anybody love that? Look at the ADX, very reliable indicator, plus DI. I don't use, Margaret doesn't use the um, sort of the trend indicator, the ADX at the top here. Uh, just the DI positive and the DI negative. Very effective, MACD rising, buy rating to confirm everything and earnings per share rising as well. Pretty fantastic. All right, so listen, I've shown you quite a bit about the versatility of the VectorVest program, the importance of the watch list, both the watch list of stocks you own 
and the watch list of stocks that um, are grouped together because of some commonality can be the S&P 100, the NASDAQ 100 in Canada can be the master retirement watch list, the uh, wow dividends. We've got some great watch lists, but uh, then you take it to a graph and you can make some decisions. Beautiful, beautiful entry here as well. You could come in back here uh, a little early on a buy, but I don't think you lose an awful lot by waiting until the next new buy right here or waiting for the uh, EMAs and the, including the 20 to cross. Pretty smooth. Yeah, and Michael says the guppies works well on indices for swing trades. Oh, that's interesting. I don't use it on on the uh, indices, but that's something to try for sure. And Mike says, I love the guppy, use it all the time. Thanks for presenting it to us. And um, Irv's, Irv K says, uh, I found when the RT falls below the MA40 of RT, it may be a good sign to consider selling. So that's the other, um, that's the other feature in the guppy that you can use. Uh, let me just go to RT and I'll just add simple 40. I'm going to drop it down below here, make it an area. And let's go to the three month view here. So with the, I'll take off a little bit of the other indicators here, just to give myself a bit more of a view. There we go. So now you can see it a bit better. So what Irv is saying, you can also just keep the RT on. Uh, and then uh, when RT gets above one, your potential buyer, six months. And when it starts to fall below the 40 MA of RT here, that might be an exit opportunity. So that's, listen, there's lots of ways to use this, <laughs> to view it and use it. So uh uh, lots of cool things you can do. And I, I find that our subscribers are very creative and um, find what works for them pretty, pretty well. All right. Well, we've covered a lot of ground. I wanted to give you some of those basics of uh, VectorVest tools that are so valuable and useful to everyone. Hopefully this was uh, valuable to you. I will send out these layouts uh, for you with the slides. If you don't get the slides, it may mean that for whatever reason, you're not on my main master list and you will have to email me at stan.heller at vectorvest.ca. Um, oh, thought I had my email in there. Maybe I've got it up in this other one. <laughs> okay, I maybe just didn't put it in. It's just stan.heller at vectorvest.ca. Maybe Jan, John or somebody can chat it. Oh, there it is. I had to go one more. Stan.heller at vectorvest.ca. If you want the slides and you don't get them uh, sort of by mid-afternoon tomorrow, um, just send me an email and uh, I'll be happy to send out the slides. The recording, of course, is available right at this YouTube location. So you're going to get the um, recording uh, for you. And um, these are the international numbers that you can call. This is the North American uh, number as well. Extension three gets you right to the support team and they'll certainly be happy to, uh, to help you set up the, the layouts uh, if you need some help. And if you're new to VectorVest and you like the features that you see, the tools that we have available for subscribers, you can uh, certainly take advantage of a 30-day trial, 995 US. Call 1-88-658-7638. All right, any last questions? <laughs> Again, appreciate um, David for his wonderful presentation on uh, US and UK markets. Appreciate John uh, Maribu helping us out in the background on YouTube, answering a lot of your, your questions already. Thank you for your kind comments uh, coming in. Uh, 
Uh, some of this I know for some of you is pretty, uh, you, you love the tools and you're already using them. And, and so maybe this was a bit of a refresher, but uh, I know I always find it valuable to refresh too. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> Michael says, thank you very, mu very much. Always remember, or he says, always learn and sometimes remember something. <laughs> so, so that's good. Mission accomplished. <laughs> oh, thank you, Sandy and uh, everyone. Really appreciate all your kind words. So thank you so much, everyone. Make sure again, if for some reason you don't get the slides by tomorrow morning, uh, I do send them out in, as a group email and sometimes Gmail um, they just wind up in spam or they wind up in junk or they just get blocked. But uh, just send me an email at stan.heller at vectorvest.ca if you haven't gotten the slides by tomorrow afternoon. So listen, thanks again, everyone. Uh, very much appreciated. Uh, quite excited today. My wife and I are off to get our second shot in the vaccine, uh, which will make us feel much more comfortable about going out and getting the groceries, <laughs> meeting with friends. So uh, looking forward to that. Thanks, everyone. Have a great rest of your weekend and uh, look forward to seeing you again on the webinars. Take care, everyone.